of Bingus Gaming. Hello. Welcome to the magical world of Bingus. What I'm actually here to talk about is the funny Bikini Booty tweet. Sounds a bit stupid, I know. However, there's one good reason for it. And that is, is it actually true? The siege is definitely in a decline, this is sure, but the biggest question is by how much, and is it actually being caused by the community? It's a good question, so that's what I plan to answer, because it actually intrigued me. So what do we do? We're going to do three different types of analysis. We're going to do a statistical, a social media based, and we're going to do our third one, which is going to be word of mouth. Very fancy. One more thing is that this video is solely not to cause drama. It is quite literally for the opposite. I solely hope that this video gets used in discussion, but I don't want to cause drama. Not what this video is for. This is the statistical bit. I'm going to try and make it entertaining, and I hopefully the statistics part of it, and actually seeing how many people are playing Siege across all platforms, is interesting. I'm hoping enough that I've put timestamps in this video. If not, just keep scrubbing to it until you've gone past statistics. Anyway, time to put my GCSE maths to work. Starting in 2020, PlayTracker predicted that 6.5 million people had played Siege through Steam via Wayback Machine. SteamDB counted a peak of 200,000 players for 2020 on Steam. Dividing these against each other gives us a rough percentage of 3.1. Then multiplying this against an announcement made by Ubisoft, counting 55 million players across all platforms, we can work out that the peak number of players on all platforms was around 1.7 million for 2020. We can also use these same values to work out what the games had on most days across all platforms. Siege usually got around 100,000 players a day on SteamDB. We then divide this by PlayTracker 6.5 million again to give us 1.5%. We are now multiplying this by Ubisoft's 55 million to give us an average of around 800,000 players across all platforms every day throughout 2020. In 2021, PlayTracker has now predicted that 17 million players have played Siege through Steam. SteamDB has recorded a record of 200,000 players peak again for 2021. Dividing these against each other gives us a rough percentage of 1.1. This year, Ubisoft has reported that over 75 million people have played Siege. Multiplying these gives us our peak of 825,000 players across all platforms. Using these same values in the way that we did before for 2020, we use PlayTracker's 17 million against SteamDB's average for the year, which was 90,000. This gives us a percentage of 0.5%. Multiplying this again by Ubisoft's 75 million players gives us only around 40,000 players daily across all platforms. The statistic, however, is screwed due to there being an increase of 36% players in the player base. And even when we add this back onto 40,000 players, we're still missing over 250,000 people a day. Feel free to sit back through the maths yourself or try to find better statistics, but these were the best I could find that were accurate enough. If you do find better sources and you can in fact prove it, please put them in the comments below and I will happily pin them. I have to break your neck. It's just the way it is. I'm not, I'm just a messenger. The second one is the social media test. Ooh, scary. This was basically going through posts that were not made by Ubisoft or any sort of Ubisoft representative Twitter account. We're put into two categories, positive and negative. Anything in the positive category was to be frag movie, fan art or cosplay, while in the negative it was much more to do with people not wanting to play the game or people saying that they're no longer going to be playing the game and vice versa. So here's what I found. Just over 51.8% of the posts on Twitter were in fact negative which is a very close 50-50 split. Now this was at 27 to 25 split, and although yes, it is a very skewed result due to it only being happening on one day, way before the new season started and been announced, it still offers a nice insight to what the game actually looks like from an outside perspective rather than an inside perspective. I would highly, 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 highly recommend you do this yourself. It's not just a matter of fact of people wanting to be constantly negative about the game, it's also partly to do with how Twitter feeds people consistent content that they're more likely to engage with. And unfortunately, if that's more negative content and they engage with that more, they're always going to get recommended negative content. It's quite a vicious cycle 
but at the same time, Twitter is a business and they have to make sure people are engaged on their platform to stay relevant. Your life is everything. You serve all purpose. You should treat yourself now. This third and final piece is what I'm calling the word of mouth segment. You see what I've gone and done. I've gone and interviewed people from all levels and aspects of Siege in a hopes of getting a much wider and broader basis from the community and having them all based in one place. This includes anything from people with notability, people without notability, anything in between. This took a lot of time to do. Anyway, here's what a few people had to say to some questions that I asked them. How often do you still play the game? This year I have played the game near daily except for the past 2-3 to three months where I have slowly started playing the game less and less. This month I have played a handful of ranked games and for the past week or so the game has been totally uninstalled. On and off, I get bored quickly so I jump between games semi-regularly, although I always come back at some point. Almost every time I boot up my PC to play games, 2-3 to three hours a week. What would you say Siege's strongest aspect is and why is it important? There is no other objective-based tactical FPS game that reaches the complexity and uniqueness that Siege has. The most important aspect, I believe, is the variety of playstyles you can see at different levels. Siege's strongest aspect was the destruction on each map. Do you think that the community has become more hostile towards change? I think in general the human race are not a huge fan of change. In Siege I feel this is only heightened. Such is the nature with something that so many people have been experiencing for so long. I would say the main reason that people wanted to enjoy the nostalgia of Year 1 and 2 Siege was because back then they had more fun playing the game, learning new things, everyone was younger back then and likely had much more free time. I feel like the community feels burnt by the changes to the game and the esports scene. Every change has been greeted by both positive and negative comments. People don't like changes, and that's okay. There will always be people who express their disagreements and as far as it's done in a nice way, I'm happy to see that reaction to any kind of changes being brought to the game. Do you think that the community mindset towards the game is appropriate? 100% not. Siege is in a weird state of being propped up by the esports scene, but also still having to cater to the larger casual audience. The loud majority on Twitter want the game to be more esports focused, but don't realise that that would potentially drive away the casual fans. Yes, I do. People love the game, and of course want all the best for the game. They want the Siege community to grow, and for esports, to provide more opportunities to players that play the game on a higher level. Not really. People love to bandwagon on the hate train. That said, I get it. Siege has a lot of deeply passionate fans. Like the Halo franchise, some people grew up with Siege as their primary title. It's sad when you want something to do well, and it just doesn't. Do you think that the community could do something better towards the feature of the game, and if yes, what? I don't think it's the community's job to do anything. They are consumers, and their job is to consume. They also have the prerogative to choose how they consume the product. If the community wants to better their community, then yes, they could begin to react and engage with others more appropriately. Yes, the community could do something better. We all complain about not having enough communication with the developers, then when we get that chance, some fans harass and mock them. If the mindset changes from let's be dicks to them to let's be reasonable and have a discussion about our top issues with them, I believe a lot more could be done and could be done for the betterment of Siege as a whole. What would you recommend to positively improve the game and why? Anti-cheat, more AMAs, listen to the community and dedicate more workers to help the community. I would recommend a more aggressive approach to management of the game. The creation of a platform which the community can communicate with developers in a safe constructive space or win anti-cheat. It would be a hell of a treat to have two new operators each update, but one will do for me. Transparency in public announcements on Twitter about issues they're facing, what they're struggling to improve and explaining why they're changing what they do would be a great improvement and would give the community a lot of insight. Obviously, the cheating issue should be a priority. There should also be a way to introduce mechanics to new players. As I mentioned, the game is amazing and complex, but there has to be an easier way to learn basic mechanics. The current tutorials are super outdated. Do you think that Siege is dying, and if so, what do you think is the main cause? Cheaters. I think the game is stagnating, yes. Siege's marketing, especially around Pro League, is horrific. I barely ever see her advertisements or any kind of marketing outside of the already accessible in-game related marketing. I do not know how Ubisoft is attempting to engage new players and their attention with new content must be poor. 
I wouldn't say that Siege is dying. Unfortunately, I don't have the insight and player numbers. I can only see the Steam charts number that have been dropping over the last couple of months. It's slowly decreasing, but I'm not worried too much. A lot of games came out recently and it's normal for people to jump to other games. Siege's numbers have always been fluctuating. I'd rather wait for Ubisoft's 2022 plans and Invitational to see how that works out before making predictions. I'm staying optimistic. Yes, Siege is dying. I think the main causes of this are both cheaters as well as the dying interest and consuming content from the community like Twitch and YouTube. Every single person I know has stopped playing the game recently, is desperate to return once the cheating issues have started getting resolved. I'm not sure the word dying is a good way to describe the game state as I don't think it will ever die. I think that it easily has the potential to bounce back and become better than ever soon. Just some simple but hard to fix issues need to be dealt with, otherwise the game is great and plenty of people still love the game. So, thank you everyone. Uh, for watching. Uh, I just want to big, say a big thanks to everyone that's helped out, either I interviewed or I've spoken to, and just a massive thank you for watching through to the end of the video, it means quite a lot. Yeah, thank you very much.